plenty of people highly critical of Israel's occupation, including some Israelis, and many accept your report's description of administrative detentions, of persecution against Palestinians, and of the denial of certain basic rights for Palestinians. They will use words like oppression, tyranny, and discrimination, for example, but that they say is where it stops. Tell us why it is that you call this apartheid. We call it apartheid because it is apartheid under international law. We have uh, spent four years investigating on the ground, conducting legal analysis with some of the best legal minds on the crime of apartheid. What we have found is a system, a system of laws, policies, practices, intricate, bureaucratic, bureaucratized, um, that are uh, there in order to ensure control and domination of the Palestinian people and in order to ensure um, demographic hegemony of one racial group uh, over another one and in order to ensure maximal control over the land. That is the definition of a system of apartheid. That my, you know, this is my first visit to, um, to Israel or PT, and I was shocked to the core by uh, finding the extent of the segregation within those societies, the extent to which people are separated, people are unequal, the extent to which apartheid and the system has been internalized to the extent that it is becoming almost banal um, and, and absurd at times. Right. That is a system of apartheid. Israel has refuted this report, as with others in the past, by calling it anti-Semitic. What's your response to that? Look, uh, you know, going after the messenger is one way of ensuring that there is no discussion on the substance. We need to focus on the reality of life for Palestinians. Amnesty stand by its report and stand by its right to critique Israel every time Israel violates international law. That is not anti-Semitic. That is doing our work as an international human rights organization in the same way that we critique a range of countries, whatever their uh, religious background, their racial uh, uh, makeup, and so on and so forth. That is what we are here for. We want to engage with the substance of what we have found, which is a multitude of human rights violations right. amounting to the crime of apartheid. I want you to hear more from the uh, Israeli uh, response. Just have a listen to what the foreign minister had to say. Instead of seeking the truth, Amnesty echoes the same lies shared by terrorist organizations. Five minutes of serious examination would be enough to know that the so-called facts in the report published by Amnesty this week are delusional and disconnected from reality. Israel isn't perfect, but we are a democracy committed to international law, open to criticism with a free press and a strong and independent judicial system. Amnesty doesn't call Syria, where the regime has murdered half a million of its own citizens, an apartheid state, nor Iran, or other murderous regimes around the world. Only Israel. I hate to use the argument that if Israel wasn't a Jewish state, no one at Amnesty would dare make such a claim against it. But in this case, there's simply no other explanation. Your response? Oh, that's ridiculous. That's lies. First of all, if that gentleman is able to review a 300-page document, very densely written in five minutes, really, I don't know. He must be a superhuman. So that's the first thing. Please read the report. It will take time, but it's worth it. Second of all, Amnesty is an impartial organization. Of course, of course we have denounced human rights violations, crimes against humanity committed by the Syrian forces. Of course, we have denounced and continue to denounce what Iran is doing to its people from 1988 onwards. We have written extensively on what happened in 1988 in Iran and the massacres that took place, as we have written extensively on crimes against humanity committed by China. Yes, and yes, we also focus on Israel because Israel 
through its laws, policies and practices, is implementing a system of apartheid against the Palestinian people. This is what international law tells us to conclude, and this is what we're doing. This is a report um, in the latest, uh, from a series of reports by human rights organizations yeah. accusing Israel of apartheid, but Israel has always rejected this comparison. Is there yeah. any indication that anything is going to change. Do you believe this report will move the needle at all? Look, yes, I do believe the report will move the needle and, and the, re the reaction from the uh, authorities of Israel tend to demonstrate that they are worried about the fact that there is a momentum building, building up and I hope that there will be a tipping point at which time the international community will not be able to turn their head away from what is happening in Israel. And I want to remind people of the, the report is about is about violations in in this country. It's about people not being able to see their families, not being able to be reunited with their loved ones. It's about this old Bedouin man coming to me and saying, why is it that my home has been demolished not once, not twice, but five times? Why is it that I can no longer cultivate my lands, even though the lands of the Bedouin people represent just three percent, in fact, less than 3% of the Negev area of, of, of um, Israel. That is what people must understand. Please read the report. Hmm. Read, read the words of the victims, of the dispossessed, of the vulnerable. Understand how the system of apartheid is impacting the Palestinian people. There will be those who argue that these reports may or may not be significant, may or may not be legally reasonable but like it or not diplomacy and statecraft have moved on when it comes to this issue have they not you mean to the 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 issue of israel uh, palestine Correct. ah you know what i think uh, what has moved on is increasing a worsening of the human rights violations. Yes, it may be that the international community is holding on to what they think to be a status quo. There is no such status quo on the ground. On the ground, there is more and more settlements uh, taking away the land of the Palestinian people. On the ground, there are more and more lands being built, more and more uh, colonies being built, more and more factories being built and roads being built that is taking away the livelihood of Palestinians. And what's happening is not status quo. What is happening is the search for political solution is becoming more and more impossible because of the multiplication of those human rights violations. So my call to the international community, if you think it's difficult now, wait, wait in a few months or year time if you have not reacted now to right. the reality on the ground. US State Department spokesman Ned Price said in a briefing that describing Israel as an apartheid state was, quote, not language that we, he said, have used, nor would we ever use, and I end quote there. What do you make of that? If the US isn't changing its narrative, do you believe that other countries will? Well, that's exactly why Amnesty International is starting a campaign today to lead, to call for the recognition of a system of apartheid in Israel. And I don't even know how an American official could uh, imagine that he will never say something on the basis of international law while he, he, can, he can foresee the future. He can force his, uh, you know, it's ridiculous as, as a statement, as a matter of fact. So we are calling for the international community to recognize what is happening on the ground. And that is a system and crimes of apartheid. Yes, the USA has a great role to play. We will be campaigning in the United States. We will be campaigning with senators, with with um, with congressmen, with civil society. We will be engaging as much as possible as we have done here in Israel with people. It is a process. It is a debate. Yes, it makes for a difficult read. Yes, it is challenging. But that is why we need to read it. That is why we need to engage with it. That is why Amnesty International exists, to, to, to call uh, out uh, the violations where and whenever they take place.